Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke these words to the crowds. To what then will I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come, eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'm not going to lie, uh, during this first reading, when we heard, love never ends, I had an urge to say, thanks be to God, because uh, this is a reading that is read so many times at weddings, probably 90% of weddings here at the cathedral, that reading is chosen as the first reading, or as the second reading, and it actually ends there, that's where the reading ends when we read it at weddings, and so, and I hear it every Saturday when I celebrate a wedding, at least during the summer, it's so... Uh, so it kind of, uh, kind of becomes repetitive a little bit. But uh, that's not really the right attitude. I don't think that it becomes repetitive. You know, when I say, oh, this reading again, come on. And then, but because uh, it is the word of God and it's such an important reading. And we can even keep going back to it to discover what it means to love and what St. Paul is trying to tell us. It's not just about nuptial love, if you want. It's not just for married couples, this reading. It's for all kinds of love. It speaks to us, this reading of St. Paul, about the centrality of love. How everything we do is about love. Who we are is about love. Who God is, God is love, right? And many saints have commented on, on this, not on this scripture passage, but about how important love is. You know, even St. Paul says, Now faith and hope and love abide. The greatest is love. The greatest of these theological virtues is love. That's what's going to, to last at the end of the day. When we see God face to face, we're not going to need faith. We're not going to need hope. But what's going to remain is love. St. Augustine, he says, love and do what you will. If you love, you can do what you want. That's what St. Saint Augustine says, right? We have to define that a little bit. St. John of the Cross, another famous one. I've quoted him before here. At the evening of life, we will be judged on how much we have loved. Right? At the evening of life. And of course, all the law and the prophets, all summarized in these two commandments of love, love God and love neighbor. And if you read the introduction to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, section 25, it says this whole book, this whole catechism, all thousands of articles, it's all about one thing. It's about love. All what we do, all what we teach, all what we proclaim, what we believe, it's all about bringing us closer and closer to that love of God. And in a world we, today, we use love in so many different ways, right? You know, I love chocolate, I love pizza, I love McDonald's, I love Cornwall, I love this person, I love that town, etc. And so what do we actually mean when we say, I love something or we love something? What does love actually mean? What does St. Paul mean when he says love? Now, I took a seminary course on this problem. The course was actually called The Problem of Love. It was a philosophy course on love, and we read a several different books on different philosophies with respect to love. And the first book that we read was The Four Loves by C.S. Lewis. I don't know if anyone's ever read it before. It's a great book on about, on about love, and he, dis, and he presents four different kinds of love 
that, that he observes, if you want, in, in, his, in, in his world in the 19th century. And he uses the, the Greek word for the, each of these different kinds of love. The Greeks have a word for everything. And so uh, we use love interchangeably between these different meanings, but the Greeks have specific words. So the first one he uses is storge. Storge means it's like affection. It's like an affectionate love, affinity. You know, storge with, with our relatives or, 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 some, or we go to the same school or, or, or uh, we, have, we love our pets, you know, or something like that. There's like, there's like an, an affection. That's, a, that's one kind of love. Another kind of love is philia. That's friendship. Holding the same values as another person. Wanting to spend time with another person. Freely chosen as well, that kind of love. Friendship. Friends are hard to come by, so friends are important. When you have friends, it's great. The other one is eros. That's another Greek word. That's romantic love. You know, the concept of being in love. I'm in love with this person or that person. That's eros. It's not just about kind of the... the it's not just about the romantic relationship, but the desire for the union with another person. The love of Christ for his church. That falls into that category a little bit. And the love of husband and wife, of course, that is an image of that. And finally, we have agape. That's the last one. Agape love. That's charity. Agape is unconditional love. Agape, Louis says, is the supernatural love in its origins. The other kinds of loves, the other three, storge, philia, and uh, eros, those are natural to us. But agape, that's supernatural. It's a gift. It's a gift from God. And uh, when I was growing up, there was a food bank in Cornwall. It was called the Agape Center. I never knew why it was called that until I took this course. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Okay, Agape means charity. So uh, it just goes to show what kind of love it is, right? It's an unconditional love. Famous example of this interchange is between Peter and Jesus in John chapter 21. After the resurrection, Peter, do you love me? Right? Three times. And Peter replies, of course, Jesus, I love you. But if you look at the Greek text, Jesus is saying, Peter, do you agape me? Peter responds, yes, Lord, I philia you. I friend you. Oh, that's a little bit different. Then Jesus says, Peter, do you agape me? Peter responds again, yes, Lord, you know that I philia, I friend you. The last one is Jesus saying, Peter, do you philia me? And then Peter says, yes, Lord, I philia you. So there is an interchange there between friendship and between agape. Now, some might think, well, Jesus is just trying to get to Peter's level, right? Peter's not ready, maybe, to get to that supernatural. So, he's, so, so Jesus understands that. He's going, okay, you know what? Friends, there we go. Great. But Jesus has often used friendship and agape in interchangeably. He even says, no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. And so, St. Paul today is urging us to have this kind of love today, agape. And that, that agape love gets into all areas of our lives, all of our relationships, whether they be affection or whether they be friendships or, or, or even romantic relationships. The love of God is what is at the source of all of that, what is what can be at the source of all of that. Now, we're going to be um, celebrating the Eucharist. The Eucharist is called the Sacrament of Charity. There's a whole encyclical by Pope Benedict XVI on the Eucharist as Sacrament of Charity. So, just in my prayer, I was thinking, you know what? That's the Agape Center right there, the tabernacle. That's the Agape Center right there. We receive that food from the Lord that helps us in our own lives. It helps us to grow in that supernatural love. That's the kind of love that St. Paul speaks of. That's the kind of love that St. Paul says is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love, agape, never ends.